So you're welcome, um, uh, Canon. Uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, for yes. You're welcome, Canon. Uh, Doctor, Mrs. Ruth Senyonyi, and uh, we are very eager to learn from you today. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this uh, evening. Uh, we missed out last Wednesday, but today we are once again gathered here. Lord, we want to learn from you as we speak through uh, Mrs. Senyon. You want to pray, Lord, that you may uh, fill her with your own thoughts and also with your own ideas, Lord, and that she may be able to articulate that which you've put in her. And that will come out clearly to us, and that this will be uh, a turning point in our lives, even as we uh, aim at working at our honesty and also our integrity. We pray that many people will join in and not only hear, but put into to practice what they will hear today. We pray that our gadgets will work well and that, yes, we shall be able to listen and to learn from each other. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Over to you, Mrs. Ruth Benyoni. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Doctor, Professor. Um, I'm sorry, my video is not very good because I'm in the car. But um, hopefully all will go well. Um, so where are you screening for me or do you want me to do it? Uh, are you able to? Yeah, let me try. If you're able to, I can allow you to share. I think that will be Yeah, let me try too. and go as far as I can and see whether it will work. Okay, I, thank you. I have good network. I'm tethering on my phone. We lost uh, Bishop Senyimba, so we've had to come over this way, but we didn't want to, to miss this as well. So that's why um, this is happening. Uh, okay. Okay, so we are talking about integrity and honesty. The values, those two values, um, both of them are within the Ecure uh, core values, but we thought we'll do them together because they are very, very, very similar, although they have their little differences, as you shall see, but they are, it's like one is a subset of the other. Greetings from John. He's very involved in, in, in the other things that are going on in the house, so that's why I'm in the car. But I'm going to switch off my video so that um, you'll be able to just see. Um, you won't. You won't be able to see me. All right, and I hope that's okay. So, um, first of all, let me explain a little bit about what values is all about. I think we did that last time when we were talking about them. But values are deeply held beliefs and principles that guide a person's attitudes, behavior, and decisions. So things that help us know what we're supposed to be doing, and then they also influence how we make choices. Sorry for that spelling. They influence and determine our lifestyle. So my beliefs and what I value and what I what, what whatever I value and what I believe in is guided by what I value, okay? So my lifestyle, the way I live, people who know me as Ruth Senyoni know that Ruth's lifestyle is because of that. Um, sometimes the values are the ideals. Normally ideals are things that you wish for. You may not attain them all the time, but they're ideal customs of a society or an institution, in this case, a cure, that people accept they follow and live by. So if we say that Ecure has, these are the values that Ecure holds, we say that, aha, everybody who is in Ecure must try to live and follow and accept. So even if you don't accept, it's like you just have to go along 
with what it is for the period you are in that institution or the period you are in that country. Sometimes I I I I, uh, I, I look at it as something in the country. If the country believes that this is how to behave and you behave in a different way, you can be put in prison. So it's the same kind of thing that we do when we are looking at values. The values are very core, the core, the core of it. So we have um, a, a kind of definition. And if John was here, he would have explained what an integer is. I did that long ago, I think in primary. It means a whole. So if you have a one, it's an integer. It's <laughs> in Latin, it means wholesome or completeness. Or sometimes we say the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. You can see the honesty coming in right there. The state of being whole or and undivided, you know, we are not... In Luganda, they call it okuta aganaga. You go this way and you go the other way. You are whole. You are not divided. This is who you are. You are free from deceit and untruthfulness. So you can't be truthful today and then not truthful tomorrow. There is sincerity. You are not corruptible. And of course, in our nation now, there is a lot of corruption that has come in. Then we also say it's a pledge to trust a pledge where I'm, I make a pledge where I'm going to trust and also be responsible. And then it's fairness and straightforwardness of conduct. All those are described. Right now, I'm still just describing what it is so that you understand it. I got this from the net and it also gives a bit of definitions with examples. Integrity is a fundamental virtue characterized by adhering to ethical and moral principles consistently, you know, a fundamental virtue. And you have to do these things consistently. It's not only today I'm truthful, then two weeks I'm not, then three weeks, that's inconsistent. You have to be consistent. And over time, they find out whether you are honest or a lady full of integrity or a gentleman full of integrity. And so it says, integrity involves keeping promises, taking responsibility for one's actions. You know, as a counselor, sometimes I watch people who don't want to take responsibility for what they do. For example, they might drink and they are drunk day and night. And you say, why are you drinking? And they say, why are you quarreling with me? Why are you looking at me in such a bad way? You are the one drinking. They are taking you, telling you, stop drinking, and you are not taking responsibility. So that means you are not a person full of integrity. Being honest in all transactions. You know, the other day I, I was stopped by a policewoman because I was holding my phone in my hand. And I was actually speaking to someone. So she stopped me. I put the phone down. I didn't even know she was going to, to look at me, to stop me because of the phone. Then she told me, Ruth Senior, do you know that you are not supposed to drive with a, a handset? And I said, yes, I do know that. And he said, so I'm going to give you a ticket. And I said, please forgive me. He said, I'm going to give you a ticket. And I said, please, please forgive me. He said, I can't forgive you because if I forgive everybody, then how will I work? And I really understood. And I said, okay, I have learned. They gave me the, I don't know. She said she gave me a ticket. I haven't yet seen it. But it's like, I. she she eventually came around and said, wait, I see. You know, in, in Luganda, I, I, I don't know what it is in English. It's like, take care of yourself. Maybe give me some money. Then you won't pay 100000 And I said, no, that is not being honest in my transactions. If if I've done something wrong, I will pay the 100000 I am not going to pay anybody to get away from this. That's what it is. You are honest. Whether somebody's seeing you or not, then treating others with respect, following rules. So it says it's a trait highly valued in personal, professional, and societal context as it fosters trust, reliability, and a sense of moral character. You can see the effects of integrity is that you become a trustworthy person, you are reliable, and that's what's going to come out all through what I'm saying. So some of the examples are keeping promises. Uh, we were just talking with my husband as we were coming here, saying there's a lady that amazes us, you know. She says one thing and does another. 
You know, she says, oh, I'll be there. I'll come. I'll, I'll, I'll come. Then the next day you say, where are you? Ah, I couldn't make it. And now it's become like the norm. So every time she says that, we're like, ah, we're tagenda kunja. She's not going to come. So she doesn't keep promises. Then honoring confidentiality. This is a big part of what I do in my job. People come and throw things in your lap. Very huge, big things. And sometimes they even die. But they tell us in our profession, even if somebody dies, you are not allowed to share their confidential information. So do you honor confidentiality when somebody tells you something? Are you a person of integrity and you honor that? Taking responsibility, you've already seen that. Treating others with respect, admitting mistakes, being honest in all situations, doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. So that is that is from the net. Now, I also looked up what, what they call syn synonyms, you know, things that are very related, okay, or related words or synonyms and related words. And then we also have antonyms, which are really like the other side of it all. So character, decency, goodness, these are things that explain integrity, honesty, morality, rectitude. Some of them I don't even know. Righteousness, you know, in the Bible, they talk a lot about righteousness, that we may be holy as Christ is holy. That is integrity, rightness, uprightness, virtue, virtuousness. That's what he calls it. Then it goes into, into related words appropriateness, correctness, decorum, ethics, etiquette. You know, if I have good etiquette, that is integrity. Fitness, that's that what surprised me because it's like if I'm fit, I'm working out, I exercise, that is also integrity. You are keeping your body quite well because of, of integrity. High-mindedness, mindedness, honor, incorruptibility. We've talked about corruption. Irreproachability. It's like when they up when they reproach you, you 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 take it, you know, you take it and do something about it. Um morals, propriety, right-mindedness, scrupulosity, scrupulosity. <laughs> they are very different, many words. Some of them I don't even know. Then antonyms, this the other side of it all is like you are bad, evil, if you are not full of integrity. You are full of evil doing. You know, there is immorality, there is sin, there is villain. You have you can be called a villain if you are not um a person of integrity. And you can be a person who is full of um wickedness. So I want you to as we talk about these things, it's good for you to see where you fall. Are you a person? Can you be called a person of integrity? Then we go to honesty. Honesty is a subset of integrity. And there's honesty, there's honor. Sorry for these terrible spellings. I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't think that would happen. Honor, integrity, they mean uprightness of character or action. So they describe honesty as uh, honor, as integrity as well. Honesty implies a refusal to lie, to steal or deceive in any way. So there are people who deceive. The heart, their deep heart in there is not saying the right thing. Honesty is also a foundation for trust that others can rely on. You know, I rely on you. I trust you because you're an honest person. If I give you my money, you are telling the truth. I remember when I was working in Bank of Uganda, I had a safe, a small safe. You know, you know it can could fit a lot of money in there. And, you know, many of my colleagues would get money maybe to travel. Sometimes they get it two weeks or three weeks before they travel. They get dollars and they, they pay them. And so because they are going to travel. And so they would, because I have a safe, they would give me their envelope full of money. And I would keep it for them. And they knew that when they needed it, I would be there to give it back to them. And it became like a norm. You know, people would give me their money. I would keep it and give it to them when they're about to travel. Some people would even say, I've come back. I had some leftover. Please keep this money for me. I am going to use it in about a week's time, please. And I did. So it's a foundation of trust that others can rely on. They relied on me 
being honest and were therefore able to keep their money with me. I can only give myself as an example. I don't want to give others. Now, these are the attributes of integrity. And some of them are in that round circle. Honesty, accountability, reliability, transparency, and being ethical. If you are full of integrity, then you are, you are equals honesty. If you are full of integrity, accountability. And I can give examples of, you know, being given money in the bank to do some activity for staff. I was in charge of welfare, well, welfare of staff. So sometimes it would involve paying staff some money. Okay. And at the end of the day, after two weeks, you're supposed to account for this money. And I do remember one day, I, I give this as a testimony all the time. You know, we were looking for 60,000 with the person that I work with. He was, he was my next door neighbor. And so we were doing accountability for the money we had used for an event. And, you know, we couldn't find where we had paid 60,000, just 60,000. So as I was going home, I told my colleague, you know what, you, 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 you find a way to deal with that. And what does that mean? I was kind of telling him, cover it up. So I went home, but as I was driving home, I said, what did I just say? No, it couldn't have been me. This is not me. This is not what happened. So I went back home and talked to my husband and told him, you know, I have done something that is not right. I've told Charles to look for for, for how to work out the 60,000 so that it is somewhere embedded somewhere in there. And so we prayed about it. And I, I went back the following morning took out 60,000 from my bag and said, 60,000 shall return to the treasury. And he looked at me and said, you people who are saved, you are totally mad. He said, you even went to discuss 60,000 with your husband and you are bringing back. I don't understand this. He couldn't understand it. But that's it. I'm accountable to someone who is greater than me. And so that makes a person reliable. And that involves transparency in every transaction, in everything that I do. Either I'm working with my husband or I'm working at work or I'm dealing with a client. Transparency, being ethical, you know. Sometimes people pay me a little more than they should. You know, my normal rate for couples is 120000 If I talk to you, you pay me one twenty. But one time, this guy paid me 300000 and I said, 300,000, that's a lot of money. I'm supposed to give it back to you. And I called him and I told him, you've paid me too much. So that's transparency. It's like, no, I, I've decided that you spent so much time with us and you did us so well. I decided that I'm going to pay that amount of money. So being open. This is some more about integrity is choosing your thoughts and actions based on values rather than personal gain. So what is my value? I speak the truth. What can I gain if I speak the truth? I might not gain anything. If I tell lies, I might gain two million in just two seconds. But if I tell the truth, I might lose two million. So it's not about personal gain, but it's be based on the values that I have. So choosing courage over comfort, that's what integrity is. I am going to be courageous. I am going to pay 100,000 for the ticket rather than comfort. I am not going to look at my neighbor's exam and how he's doing it and, and pick and see what he's done. I am not going to pick the paper that he's doing and make it my own. That is comfort. I don't have to do much work. It's not hard work. So choosing what is right over what is fun, over what is fast or easy. Because other things are easy. And you know, sometimes when some people come and they have, they, they have cheated on their husband, they have cheated on their wife or something like that. Sometimes I say, you know, it's very, very, very easy to cheat. Actually, it's easier than loving your wife because your wife is hard and she's, she's hard on you. She's telling you what you don't want to do. And this girlfriend of yours is just so easy. So you are choosing what is right rather than what is easy. It is easier to copy from your friend who has taken time to research the things that you're supposed to research. Pick up her thing and copy it. That is easy. That is fun. That is fast. 
Okay, so integrity involves practicing what you value. Okay, and then we move on. Um, this is integrity traits. And you can see the traits that are in there. There's consistency. You are consistent in your actions, in your words, and in your beliefs. Demonstrates integrity. Responsible. You are taking responsibility for your actions and their consequences. So if I drank myself silly and made a mistake and got some disease, it means I am going to say it was my fault. And then I will change or I will do something to say I am so sorry for what happened. Okay? Then honesty. You see, I told you that integrity, honesty is a subset. Cultivating honesty and transparency in all interactions to establish trust and integrity. We move up to moral courage. Demonstrating moral courage by standing up for what is right and maintaining that high level of moral and ethical standards. If you are working for any company, if you are working for anything and they tell you, you know, for you to keep that job, you are going to sleep with a boss. To keep that job, you are going to pay some five million so that, hey, moral courage says, no, I'm standing up for what is right. If I lose my job, I will lose it. And you see people around you get to know that this person, uh -huh, don't pass those things by them because they are so morally upright and they have ethical standards. They will not do that. And I think for us, we've seen John and, and, and I, him working in Uganda Christian University, me working in Bank of Uganda, we are able to stand up and say, we, we did moral courage. There is nothing that someone can pin me over. Anything that I did in the bank, that you know, I stood up for myself, even when it meant losing a few things. Okay, Accountability, I've already explained accountability. Now humility, embracing humility and showing respect for others' viewpoints are important in aspects of integrity. And then fairness, practicing fairness and treating everyone with equity and justice also demonstrates integrity. Wow. I hope you are all still there. Then the honesty traits. I don't have such a nice picture like that of integrity, but it's like when you are honest, you are straightforward. You are not exaggerating. You know, some people who exaggerate stories, they are showing off. No, you are straightforward. You are speaking the truth. You are transparent. You are consistent in word and action. You are taking responsibility. And you can see how they overlap. Huh? You are trustworthy. You value integrity and you are respectable. So I want to look at some of the biblical references for these two words. Honesty, we read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. It says, therefore, each one of you must put off falsehood. Falsehood is not honesty or integrity. We must speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Proverbs 12, 17 says, an honest witness tells the truth. But a false witness tells lies. What did you see? What are you able to say as a result of what you saw? And then Proverbs 12, 22 says, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. And we move to integrity by biblical references. First Chronicles 29, 17 says, I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. So there are many verses that say, test me, test me and find out what I am. And when he finds out that you are a person full of integrity, he's like, wow. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. So integrity. Proverbs 10, 9 says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. But whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. <laughs> I don't want to be a person who is known for crookedness. I'm sure you know some people who, who work crookedly. They, they come and give you fake things. And then they, they, they are really crooked, but you need to walk securely. Proverbs 11.3 says the integrity, of the, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. So integrity 
and uprightness go together. But if you are unfaithful, then you are not full of integrity. Proverbs 21, 3 says, To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So those are some of the things. And I like this Proverbs 6. I think it's Proverbs 6. Yes. Proverbs 6, 16 to 20. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes. A truthful, honest, integrity heart cannot devise wicked schemes. Feet that are, that are quick to rush into evil. God hates that. A false witness. So all these are showing that they are detestable to him and they are totally against integrity and honesty. A false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Okay, that is Proverbs 6. So now we ask, does honesty and integrity manifest in you? You know, we all like these virtues and demand them of others, but most times we don't examine ourselves to see whether these virtues belong to us as well. So we are not talking of demanding uh, integrity or honesty of others, but we need this to manifest in you and in all you do, including your vocation, including your education, including your lifestyle, including your marriage, if you are married, including your relationships, if you are in one. So let's look at integrity at the workplace. You can ask, are you reliable? Are you dependent? dependable? Do you show up? on time, maybe you are a teacher, maybe you are a student, maybe you are expected to be at the hospital at a certain time. Are you reliable? Are you trustworthy? If they gave you 300,000, would you go to the shop and bring back that change? You know, I have people who work for me, you know, somebody who looks after where I work, the guard. Sometimes I send him to buy things. And he's supposed to return, whether it is 200 shillings, whether it is 5,000, he's supposed to return it. And then maybe I can give it back to him. But that shows me that if I give him anything, I can trust him with it. So are you, class, are you trustworthy with classified information? Do you practice open communication with your colleagues and managers and schoolmates? Do you know where they, do you tell them where you are? Do you tell them what you are doing? You know, why you are doing it? why you didn't come to school, or you are telling lies. You know, I'm very sick in bed when you have gone for a wedding. You know, it will be such a shame to find you at a wedding when you said you are sick in bed. Are you respectful? Are you honest? Are you patient with your colleagues? Respectful. You know, pull up a chair. Do you look out for people? Do you realize that maybe they have a problem and you are, you are going to, when you are driving, all those are things that are, show whether you are a person of integrity. Do you have a strong work ethic and strive to produce high quality work consistently? You know, now most of you are students. I was a student at one time when I was doing my PhD. I got A's throughout. Why? Because I determined that I am going to put in all my best. I'm also a trainer. I teach master's students of counseling. And I say, if I'm going to teach everything that I do must be excellent. So I take time, even these things, it's just that today helps, but, you know, I strive to make sure that the work that I do is high quality. Then responsibility. Do you take responsibility for the actions, especially when you make a mistake? Because that means you go back to the person and say, you know what, I am truly sorry. I apologize. I am very, very sorry for whatever has happened. Do you make sound decisions even when you are under high stress situation? Somebody has died or you are in an exam or you, you know, your money has got lost. Do you make sound decisions or you just do very thing, things very quickly without thinking about them? Are you equipped to provide high quality service to the customers? Many people are complaining about customer care in many areas. People are talking, you come in, you, you walk in and somebody is cabozy with the other person. They don't even see you. You've come to the hospital. Someone, you know, I'm really sick. And they say, hey, we are still talking. Don't you see? And they even walk away, go to the bathroom and come back. And you're like, really? 
Is that high quality service? It is not. So these are some of the important things that come out of integrity at the workplace. Number one, it creates an open and positive work environment. Two, integrity fosters respect and trust. I'm sure you've seen places where they're working together and there's in, there is respect and trust for one another. It fosters reliability. You know that if somebody is not coming in office today, they will alert me and they will tell me the truth. Number four, integrity ensures quality. So you are working in a hospital. Imagine if you are not full of integrity and you are going to do surgery and you have stolen half of the things that are going to work in the surgery. Really, is, is there going to be quality? No. Number five, it enhances focus. When you are full of integrity, full of honesty, you are focused. You know what you want and you are going to strive to get it. It also brings a, an, an amazing company culture. You know, as I said, I worked for Bank of Uganda for many years and I can assure you that the culture there was one where people really, really um, believed that people are honest. There is a lot of money that is being worked on. And if, if you are not honest, really, you can't work there. Yeah. So it builds up a culture that for us that work in this place, this is what happens. And we are honest people. And I've seen that. I can stand for them. Here are some of the examples of how to have everyday integrity. I'll not read everything. We'll send this um, this this to you. You you can look at it, but you keep your promises. That's every day, even if it takes extra effort. You can go back to a shop and pay back for something you forgot to pay for, or you can take back the money they gave me back too much change. You can take it back. You don't betray a friend's trust, even if you get into trouble. You inform the cashier that he gave you too much change. You don't gossip or talk badly about someone. Always think, what would I say if the person I'm talking about is sitting right here? Would I say the same things? So you take back those words. Do you remain true to your spouse or your partner when they are not around? When in a serious relationship, don't keep secrets from each other. Okay, if somebody drops some money or they've left their laptop somewhere, are you a person who pick up that laptop and look up, look for them or announce that this is something that you left behind? Okay, then at the workplace, I won't read everything, but at the workplace, are you supposed to, to work when you work when you're supposed to and save socializing? So save snacking, searching the Internet and personal phone calls for break time. Do you do that? Many of us use the time for work, for doing our personal things. Some even use all the paper that is at the workplace for their personal things. I remember one person who had a church and every, every Friday they would roll off the songs and the, the service using about four packets of, 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 of the paper there. That's not right. If you're in management, keep your employees informed so that they know what is coming. If you make a mistake and a team's project gets messed up, own up to your mistake. Don't let, let your teammates take the fall. Never steal supplies from the workplace. When making a business deal, make sure everything is on the table and nothing is left out. So those are some of the practical things that come out of there. Now, here are some of the definitions. I got about three. Paul Beamon defines Christian integrity. Christian integrity, therefore, is the strength of the practicing believer. It means wholeness of character and uncompromising adherence to a code of values and consistency of word and deed based squarely on the word of God. That is Christian integrity. We are based on the word of God. And I like this because uh, the, I think it was yesterday, but one, they asked me to speak to people who are doing premarital counseling and marriage counseling for people in a church. So I told them, we are not going to base our what we are doing 
on anything else except the word of God. So we are going to be telling them that they are married because the word of God says this. They are doing marriage because the word of God says this. And if you change and bring in anything else, then you are going to compromise everything. So we need to stick to the word of God. And this whole year, the Church of Uganda has been particularly saying, let's not conform to the world, but let's be transformed by the word of God. That is what it means to live by the word. Then Billy Graham said, integrity and honesty, of course, is the glue that holds our way of life together. We must constantly strive to keep our integrity intact. When wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, all is lost. So the glue holds our character together. Let's not lose it. Then, um, this was given me by my husband. He says, integrity and honesty are to be in public what you are in private. So what you are in public, you have to be in private. What you are in private, you be in public. There's nothing like private and public. What the public knows about you must be the same. How, you, how your attitude is, your motives, your thoughts, and the you even in the darkness. You are known by only two, God and yourself. If God's witness agrees with your testimony, you are a person of integrity and honesty. If God can put a stamp in your, in, in, on your forehead and say, Ruth, hmm, I agree with your testimony. What you are telling these people is the truth. Then you are a person of integrity and honesty. Integrity and honesty mean that our public and private life are one before God. It is not hypocrisy. I remember preaching and saying, you know, many of us are, hypocr are hypocrites. In fact, in one of the verses it says, you hypocrites, eh? you are like um, graves that have been painted with white, but inside you are dead bones. You know, they are, they are, they are going bad. So we are not supposed to be hypocrites. We are full of integrity and honesty. We are able to stand before God without a guilty conscience. We are not going to go and say, you know, God, uh, the other day I, uh, I forgot what I was supposed to say. Because if you are telling the truth, you don't even forget what you said yesterday because it's the truth. But if you tell lies, you have to keep on trying to remember what you said. So now the question comes, who are you and what do you do? For example, when your wife or husband is away, are you the same? When you are with your girlfriend or boyfriend in a secret dark place, do you conduct yourself with purity towards the opposite sex? When your supervisor is not looking, oh, today he's not coming. He lost a brother. He lost a sister. He's not coming. So you, you, you have the day off. No, whether the supervisor is looking or not, you're supposed to do the right thing. Or maybe you are in an exam and the supervisor goes out. I, do you peep into other people's um, papers? You know, what do you do when you genuinely don't have the tuition fees? Or when you have gen tuition fees and then sometimes they say, Ogena no yozam. you double it in a betting, in a betting place. You know, when someone is not, is evangelizing you or coursework, when they are, what do you do? What about receipts? There are so many. You know, we worked in organizations where people falsify receipts. They say they have put in fuel for for five hundred thousand. You can't even fit in one in one tank, and they have a receipt of five hundred thousand from a petrol station in Masaka. And the accountability is all wrong because they've falsified the receipt. So, choose integrity and honesty. Choose. It's a choice, by the way. Choose to walk with a clear conscience. Choose sometimes to overhaul your whole thought life. If your thought life is not consistent with, with, your, with what you say, you need to bring it together so that it is one. How do my thoughts go through my head and how what comes out? It needs to be the same. That's why they say, think. Think of those things that I think that's, a, that's Philippians 4. It says, think of those things that are good. And da, da, da. he gives a whole list. And then he says, 
choose the appropriate vocabulary. What comes out of your mouth should be something that is full of integrity and honesty. Your conduct must seek merit from God. Sorry, that's um, your conduct must seek merit from God. How I conduct myself must be approved by God himself. Okay, this honesty and integrity are your best exhibit to the community. So if people see you, they're like, wow, that is Ruth Senyonyi. We know her. I have known her from Gayaza High School. She went to Makere University. She did her master's. She finished her PhD. She's still the same. This woman who is married to John Senyonyi for the last 39 years, she's still the same. This woman who worked in Bank of Uganda, full of integrity and honesty, still the same. Now she's retired, still the same. She speaks honestly, still the same. May God help you that you walk with a clear conscience, that your thought life is appropriate, your vocabulary is appropriate, your conduct seeks merit with God. And may the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for listening in this evening. God bless you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Tawera. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ruth. And as you spoke from the beginning, the common one is, um, you know, walking into a shop and they give you more money and you're thinking, should I retain it? Should I uh, go with it? I think that uh, I, I also experienced it at some point, I would walk away with the change, but I think I've gotten over it. Now, if I'm given more money, I actually give it back. So. And I think this is really a good presentation to all of us. Those of us that are in clinical or in medical, you agree with me that sometimes patients want to give you a lot to extra money that maybe you see them early or something like that. So the next time patients present money to you, please remember this uh, presentation and do the right thing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ruth. And in the chat we have, it has been hot and so beneficial. Thank you so much. Thank you, doctor, for these words. Amen. Thank you. Uh, God bless you, mother. Thank you so much. Your message is good. Uh, the peeping when the examiner is out. Okay. So as only at PhD, this is excellency at its highest level. We have to forward this YouTube link to at least 20 people. This will create a ripple effect at AQ at all levels. Okay. Thank you so much, our dean. Uh, I promises to come in for a lecture and we wait for an hour without any communication. Okay. Uh, I saw something, somebody was saying they're coming for, it means you made them feel extremely fine after meeting you. I can't wait to get a marital counseling from you. So Dr. Ruth, you already have candidates from this uh, presentation. People are coming for marital counseling. Thank you so much for today's uh, presentation. And just before we go, allow me to call upon Professor Michael Kawia to help us uh, close the session for this evening. Yes, uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ruth Senyonyi, uh, Dr. Cannon. This um, has been really good. And uh, I think as we have been talking, we have all been checking our hearts, we've been checking our thoughts, we've been uh, scrutinizing our words and also our actions. Where, 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 and who the best exhibit to the community. And you've told us that we should choose, work with a clear conscience, overhaul our thought life. Overhaul means to do it completely anew. And that one can only do with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to overhaul uh, our thought life, to choose the appropriate vocabulary. What we say is so important uh, to conduct uh, ourselves um, uh, uh, with uh, godly merit. You conduct your conduct must seek merit. Of God, in other words, God should uh, see that our conduct is worthy of merit, uh, because we are our, our integrity and our honesty is our best exhibit for the community. 
So let us choose, let us choose to do what is right, even when we know that it's going to cost us something. And let us, let our public lives and our private lives be the same before God. What we are in public should be the same as what we are in private. What, what we are in private should be the same as what we are in public. Uh, thank you for that. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for uh, these uh, wonderful powers which we've heard from uh, uh, Reverend, from Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. Thank you, Lord, that uh, she has been able to speak even with a her life example to show us that, yes, it is possible. And so if it is possible with her, I will know that with you, everything is possible. So help us, Lord, to overhaul our thought lives, to choose our vocabulary, to do the things which are worthy of merit to you so that we are the right exit to the community for you. Help us, Lord, that what we are in public is the same as what we are in private, and what we are in private to be the same as what we are in public, so that we are totally transparent, and so that we can walk with a clear conscience before you and before all people. We want to pray for a blessing on the Senyonis. We also want to remember the Senyimbas who have lost their dad, Lord, that you may be close to them and comfort them, and Lord, we want to uh, put ourselves before you this uh, this Wednesday. We know that there are new people coming in into the HRA community. Uh, Lord, that even as they come in, that we may impact them in a positive way. And that together as a community, we may be able to be a community of honesty and a community of integrity. And be with us as we sleep tonight. Give us rest. And help us to be to rejuvenate our bodies so that tomorrow we are strong to serve you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you, Tawera. Amen. Thank you so much, bro, for everything that you have said and for the prayer. And also thank you to our facilitator for the evening. Thank you also to AQA uh, management uh, staff that have also been able to join us and also to all the students that have logged in. Today we didn't do so well with the numbers. I hope that uh, we will improve next uh, Wednesday. Thank you so much. This is what we had for you this evening. From me to you, have a blessed evening till next week. Good night.